Hey, good morning, friends. Welcome to today's devotion. It's the last devotion of 2021, and I'm Justin. I'm glad to be able to lead us in this. Um, I will just give us a couple seconds to uh, have people find us. If you are joining me right now, leave a comment in the comment section so that we can interact. I can know that you're here. Um, even if you're joining me later, I would love it if you would leave a comment in the comment section. I check those and we can interact and I just uh, like knowing that we've connected about this. So today I would like to be talking a little bit about some thoughts as 2021 comes to a close and we look towards 2022. I've been uh, in the exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola and there's something from uh, my work uh, doing uh, doing those exercises that I thought might be uh, helpful, uh, interesting to us. So I'm going to present it uh, to you and I hope that it's helpful as, as you think about where you're at today and where we want to go uh, for the, the year ahead. I'm going to pray, ask that God would meet us, and we'll go from there. God, thanks for today. Thank you for your love for us. Um, and as I'm going to pray at the very end, thank you that you brought us in safety uh, to this point where we can join together. I ask God that you would give us something good, something of you, um, that you would uh, help us and that you would uh, cover us in your love. Remind us uh, that you're here with us uh, and that you're for us. And we ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. So uh, the... The thing I wanted to share with you is from a thing that's called First Principle and Foundation. And this is something that Ignatius came up with that has to do with how he wanted to organize his life, like how he wanted to live his life, what he actually thought life was all about. And this one has been rephrased by David L. Fleming, S.J. And so uh, I would like to read it to you, first of all. And then I have kind of a short thing that I'd like to just invite us to, to think about together. Um, it's not all that long, but it is kind of chock full of stuff. So I'm going to read it slowly. I'm going to leave some gaps. Um, you know, this is Ignatius trying to explain how he wants his life to be and what he thinks life is all about. And it's in like just a few little paragraphs. So um, hold on to your hats. You might just want to even close your eyes uh, and listen. It says this, God who loves us and creates us wants to share life with us forever. Our love response takes shape in our praise and honor and service of the God of our life. Okay, so that's the first sentence. And then um, there, are, there are like five sections here. That was the first. All the things in this world are also created because of God's love, and they become a context of gifts. So everything in this world and the world itself is gifts, presented to us so that we can know God more easily and make a return of love more readily. Okay? So um, all these things that are created, creation itself is a gift, and all of these things exist so that we can love God um, in return. And so here's where he says, as a result. As a result, we show reverence for all gifts of creation and collaborate with God in using them so that by being good stewards, we develop as loving persons in our care for God's world and its development. Okay, so our job is uh, to steward and develop things. And then he puts in a but. And here is the but. But if we abuse any of these gifts of creation... Or, the contrary, take them as the center of our lives. What happens, does he say? He says, we break our relationship with God and hinder our growth as loving people. Okay? So when things get in the wrong order, when we make something of creation the center of our life instead of God, we break a relationship with God. I think it's very well stated. So here is how he thinks we should live life and how he wanted to live life. So he says this, In everyday life, then, we must hold ourselves in balance before all created gifts. So hold ourselves in balance. 
as we have a choice and are not bound by some responsibility. Okay, hold things in balance, but be aware of our responsibilities that we've already committed to. We should not fix our desires on these things, okay? We should not fix our desires first on these things. This is where it gets kind of intense. Health or sickness, wealth or poverty, success or failure, or a long life or a short one. Wow. I remember the first time I read this a number of years ago, and I was like, what on earth? Um, I feel like, don't we all, especially, you know, in our culture say, well, I want health, I want wealth, I want success, I want a long life. And I don't think he's saying that any of those things are wrong to desire. But I think he is saying, if we put that thing at the center of our life, we're going to miss out. Um, so just think about this as a, as a, as a moment. Like if we were to just say what I want most is wealth, wealth, wealth in my life, okay? Might that shape our lives in a way that takes us away from maybe a deeper thing that God is calling us to? Or if I am so concerned about being su successful all the time, and I have, you know, kind of grown up being a perfectionist and God has been bringing healing to my life. So I really relate to this idea of I want success. I want to do everything successfully. Um, but if my main goal is success or what the world deems as success, might I miss something that's deeper of God? Um, and then, you know, and he's also saying health or sickness or long life or short one. Those are harder, right? Um, he's not saying don't desire a short life, don't desire sickness. You know, he's, like, he's not saying to do those things, but he is saying don't put those at the center of your worry. He says this about it, for everything has the potential of calling forth in us a more loving response to our life forever with God. I'm going to read that one more time. For everything has the potential of calling forth in us a more loving response to our life forever with God. So this is what I want to uh, bring to our attention today. This is what I felt like I wanted to share for me as well. The, the the thing that um, we need to keep in mind, I think Ignatius is saying, is we have life forever with God. That changes everything about how we look at today. And everything that we're going through has the potential of allowing us to respond deeply to God. And I think that Ignatius is saying, if we do this, then this will happen. He says, our only desire and our one choice should be this. I want and I choose what better leads to God's deepening life in me. And that's what Ignatius is going for. And that's actually what I want for my life too. I want to choose what better leads to God's deepening life in me. We can't always control what happens to us. We all know that from this last year, right? We can't control whether things go well or poorly. We can't always control things about our health. We can't control our successes, our failures. Um, and, you know, many of us have lost people um, dear to us um, from COVID and, you know, other things this year. We can't control the length of our lives. What Ignatius is saying is what we can control is choosing what better leads to God's deepening life in us. And that's a great way to... Uh, arrange and focus our lives. And that's why I wanted to leave that with us today as we come to the end of 2021 and we look forward to 2022. What I'd like to do is just pray a prayer um, that if you'd like uh, to ask God and the Holy Spirit to come upon you and help you choose in this coming year ahead what deepens your um, life forever with God, um, I'd love to pray that over you. And I also just wanted to be, remind us that this is an idea that is very rooted in Scripture. You know, if we look in Philippians 3, 8, this is when Paul says, Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Um, I can lose sight of that sometimes, but I just so believe it's true. Everything else, although there are great things, such wonderful things in this world, if you actually compare them, if I compare them with the value of knowing Jesus and who Jesus is to me and what uh, Jesus means to me, um, those other things start losing uh, their value. They lose their place. They're not number one in my life. 
um, you've probably experienced the same. And so um, I'd just like to pray for us, and then I would like to uh, pray the prayer uh, that i like to send you off with the concluding prayer of the church from one of the things that Phyllis Tickle uses in her divine hours, okay? God, thank you um, for the good things that have happened in this last year. And God, we also present these things that have been challenging and have been losses and burdens. Our successes, our failures, our health and our sickness. Those of us that are here, those of us that have even gone ahead of us. Um, God, I ask that this mysterious, uh, this mysterious thing that you do where you're able to deepen our life with you, whatever we're going through, whether it's wonderful or whether it's challenging. Uh, God, would you do that work in us in 2022? God, would you help us to put our focus on choosing what deepens our life with you? You're the most precious thing, Jesus. So, um, God, would you just highlight something? Uh, it's a big, it's a big topic, but would you highlight something um, that we could pay attention to uh, in this year ahead? Friends, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this stuff. Uh, put in a comment. I'll actually try to post the entire uh, principle and foundation in the comments if you want to do a little bit of light reading. Uh, and uh, let me know what you think, okay? Um, I'd be happy to interact with you in the, in the comment section. And let me send you off into your New Year's Eve with the concluding prayer of the church. You can close your eyes, open your hands. I'm just going to bless you into your day. I'm going to tweak this to make it refer to the year ahead. Okay? Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought my friends in safety to this new year. Preserve them with your mighty power, that they may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all they do, direct them to the fulfilling of your purposes. And we ask it through you, Jesus Christ. You are our Lord. We give you today, we give you the year ahead. Amen. Okay. Much love to you, friends. Uh, I will see you soon. Happy 2022. Bye.